Welcome everyone on behalf of Dimensions in Travel and Alma Waterways. We are delighted to have you join us for our transition from ocean cruising to river cruising with Alma Waterways. This is our 11th in our virtual travel series uh, about exciting destinations and fun ways to travel. My name is Diana St. James and I'm one of the owners of Dimensions in Travel. Before we get started, I'd like to cover a couple of housekeeping points. Uh, as our lovely narrator just mentioned, you are all in listen-only mode, so if Amazon delivers a package or your dog starts barking, we'll never know. Uh, you do have the opportunity to ask questions, so you'll see if you click on that little orange arrow, a Q&A box will open up and you have the opportunity to post questions there and we'll answer those questions at the end of our uh, time together today. We're so glad you're here. Dimensions and Travel has been in business for 42 years, since 1978, and we all miss travel so much and we uh, know that you do too. So we hope these virtual events will be a way for you to go somewhere with us, at least right now. Indeed. So we do have a special guest from Alma Waterways joining us today to talk about those differences between ocean cruising and river cruising. The Danube and the Rhine are very popular itineraries, especially the first time you go on a river cruise. So they do seem like a good place to start and an excellent way for our guests to show you those differences. But before we get started, I do want to introduce my business partner, friend, and agency co-owner, Jill Romano. Hi, Jill. Hi, everybody. Hi, Diana and Brian. It's great to have you all with us today. I'm so pleased to introduce you all to Brian. If you were on our last call, you, you know him already, and you'll be all ready for his enthusiastic presentation. Uh, for those of you that don't, he's our business development manager with AMA Waterways, and we've been working with Brian for many years, and who better to talk to us about this transition from ocean to river. He worked for one of the major cruise lines um, that you all would recognize, especially in the San Francisco Bay Area, and then moved on to river cruising. So his unique perspective, I think, will uh, be interesting and informative for us all today. And we're just delighted to have him here to share with us these iconic rivers and his unique perspective and personal travels. So. Brian, would you please share with us today um, the iconic rivers of Europe and transitioning from ocean sailing to river cruises? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Diana. Uh, indeed, it's a pleasure to be with Dimensions in Travel, who, as uh, Jill mentioned, I've and Diana knows too, that uh, I've worked with these two fine ladies for, gosh, lots and lots of years, and it's been an absolute pleasure. They are the consummate professionals uh, without equivocation as uh, the folks that uh, work with them as travel advisors, and so I give them my highest and heartiest recommendation, and I thank them also for uh, inviting Ama Waterways to participate in these uh, armchair travel events, webinars, whatever you want to call them, sort of the virtual new world that we're all sort of delving into these days as we uh, are sort of housebound and whatnot. But um, we are doing quite a few of these and we're getting nice turnout. So thank you for uh, taking time out of your afternoon to come out and, and listen to what we have to say today. And yes, it is specifically kind of geared towards uh, ocean folks who maybe not have been on a river cruise yet and might be thinking, gosh, that's something I might want to consider. And I hopefully do have a kind of an interesting perspective as as uh, uh, Jill mentioned in terms of where I've come from. So without further ado, I'm gonna jump into the webinar here. And actually, you know what? The other thing is I'm gonna actually uh, pull myself off camera as well so you can enjoy the uh, images on the screen. I, I'm not Italian, but you, you all the gesturing I do, I, and, and it's like, look, in a mirror right now. So I pull myself off a camera and then I will uh, come back. And as uh, Diana mentioned, there is a question box uh, there for you to type uh, your questions in and then we can take a look at those uh, towards the end. So I'm going to hide my uh, hide my camera and I'll say bye for now, but you'll still hear me talking hopefully. So bye for now and then I'll see you a little bit later. All right. 
So, vive la différence, a uh, little French there, even though we're going to be on the Danube and the Rhine, and the Rhine actually does go through part of France. So, uh, in terms of the ocean cruises to river cruises, so let's let's dive right in here and take a look. So again, thank you in many different languages for coming out today. We're so appreciative of your interest and your support. And uh, this is, of course, lovely Jill and Diana and me in, uh, I think that's three and a half years ago. That's certainly pre-COVID, pre-pandemic, uh, in a suit that is hanging somewhere in my closet. And hopefully uh, at some point I'll get to put that on again and get out there and uh, wear it on my sales calls. Uh, just a quick little, uh, preview of coming attractions, and that is uh, coming up on Wednesday, December 2 at 3 p.m. Uh, we are going to have another in our series of webinars, and this one will be fairy tale Christmas markets. That's right, we do Christmas market cruises, and the guest presenter is Christine Karst, who is a co-founder of our company, uh, and she absolutely is passionate about the Christmas markets in particular. As a matter of fact, she comes from Dresden, formerly East Germany, but anyway, they are the, uh, I should say, oldest Christmas markets were in that area where she grew up. So she's going to present on December 2, and you'll see invitations coming from Dimensions in Travel, and you won't want to miss that. Now, in terms of contact, yes, contact your favorite advisor, travel advisor at Dimensions. There's the number, uh, the 800-828-2962. And you can do a screen print of this if you know how to do that. Otherwise, I'll show this again a little later. And then the email address is info, I-N-F-O, at dimensionsandtravel.com. We don't have a direct policy. In other words, our bookings come through our travel agency partners, right? And so we do very little advertising, but we count on Dimensions and Travel uh, to support us. And they do such a wonderful job of that. So they're the folks that you definitely need to be in touch with when it comes to uh, booking your Ama Waterways cruise. Well, this, you know, in terms of uh, one significant difference that's pretty, uh, I would say, overt here as you look at the picture, and this axiom is absolutely true, and that is uh, oceans take you to countries and rivers take you through the countries. So that is absolutely true to begin with, and you see this beautiful iconic picture. Uh, these rivers, and today we're talking about primarily the Rhine and the Danube, we might, we're going to throw in the Moselle and the Main as well, but these were truly the roads of old in Europe, uh, establishing commerce as these towns and villages and cities emanated from the rivers. And they, to this day, still have commerce between the towns and villages and cities uh, as far as commercial traffic. But there's a lot of new traffic, which is the wonderful river ships that travel these rivers. Another cool thing is you're always within the given country's boundaries. So you're not out in international waters, again, you're always incorporated within a given country. And this happens to be a picture from along the Rhine River. And of course, the Rhine and the Danube, for first time river cruisers, those are typically the rivers that people gravitate towards that would be like saying the Columbia or the Mississippi River. I mean, very iconic rivers in Europe. And we actually have over 20 different uh, departures on the Rhine and the Danube. And here's a map. And so we're primarily in Europe. We do some exotic cruises as well in Southeast Asia, Africa, and in Egypt. Um, but again, we're primarily here in Europe. So we do the length and breadth of Europe. So we'll talk more about this map a little bit later, particularly as it relates to uh, something called the Rhine Main Danube Canal, which uh, really was uh, the beginning of river cruising in Europe when that canal opened up. And again, we'll talk more about that. But as I say, we're primarily uh, in Europe. And we're family owned. We have been for the last 18 years, since 2002, uh, by this triumvirate of really wonderful people. They're the most down to earth, wonderful people you could ever meet. And they're also very, very passionate about owning our company. They're also very prudent as well, which we'll talk about. That's Rudy Schreiner, his wife, Christine Kars. He's from Vienna. She's from Dresden, I mentioned. And Gary Murphy, who has Irish roots. His dad, Jimmy Murphy, threw his lot in with Rudy and Christine back in 2002. Mr. Murphy passed away about four or five years ago, but his son, Gary, is our senior VP. And again, Rudy and Christine are the co-founders. And as I say, Christine will be hosting the next webinar coming up in December. Rudy is the acknowledged godfather of North American river cruising, which we'll get into a little bit uh, later. So here is, and, and many of these certainly, I, I think would, would transfer over to uh, certainly to, to ocean cruises, although not all. 
right? So uh, the immersive nature of a river cruise, because we like to say that river cruising is you're immersing yourself in a local culture, right? The inclusiveness as well, the intimacy, and that word intimacy is going to factor in big time as we go forward as it relates to pre and post COVID travel. Um, so smaller ships, the, of course, personal attention. I happen to like this. I'm not big on lines and crowds, and you don't get that on a river cruise. Always a river view, always in the center of town, no dressing up, frankly, and no seasickness, which is something as well to, to be aware of. Now, when it comes to specifically talking about oceans and rivers, so again, my background, um, I spent... 23 years on the ocean side of things with two different uh, cruise lines. Both of them, you you know, uh, particularly one that cruises quite a bit out of San Francisco uh, and have absolutely wonderful, wonderful experiences and memories of being with those companies. And then I switched to the river uh, because frankly that, and, and to this day, we think pre-COVID it was hot, post-COVID it's gonna be hot as far as a travel experience. And so I jumped essentially from ocean selling to river selling of rivers. So here are then some of the things to be aware of. And that is of course the intimacy factor once again. Our biggest ship is only 192 guests. I'll show you a picture of that later. We have a ship in South Africa that has only 28 guests. All of our staterooms have picture windows, balconies, double balconies and, and, and suites. So there's no inside. That's quite a big difference. And then of course, it's all casual. I say country club casual attire. So there's not really formal or semi-formal nights as it relates to dressing up. And then yes, every day you have constantly changing scenery because you're uh, again, cruising within these given countries, right? Um, and you don't have to, I used to get the question when I worked at uh, the other cruise line, gee, should we be uh, for a particular cruise for that particular itinerary, should we be on the port or starboard side for the best view of this or the best view of that? Well, frankly, every stateroom, you get a view with us. And again, the no motion sickness, that's a big deal. Sometimes people don't realize they might be prone to motion discomfort, or at least they have to take medication with them. You have to look out the window to see if a river ship is moving, right? So no tendering, there's none of that, obviously. And then we're right, obviously, in the city centers, which is cool, uh, no lines. And then the inclusive nature of these shore excursions. So these are all included, and then we break them up into smaller groups, right? So you never really, we, I like to say, we've been practicing social distancing with our shore excursions for the longest time. We just never called it that because we go out with very small groups and we break them up into pace levels, if you will. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And I like this because uh, the play on words, if you will, every day is a sea day rather than a sea day. And you see the juxtaposition of the two words spelled differently, and that is absolutely the case. And one of the key, key differences of being on the rivers, you do get to see, S-E-E, -E, something new and different every single day uh, versus the days out at sea. And I'm not denigrating ocean uh, days at all. I did that for, as I say, over 20 some odd years. It's just one of the key differences when you're thinking about moving from ocean to river is this aspect. This is one I show again because I think this is really, really important. Um, the no schlepping factor, I like to call it that, that particular term, and that is that you dock right smack dab in the heart of town. And that's going back to this concept and notion that these towns and villages and cities, again, emanated. They grew up from the river. So wherever you pull in is typically close to, if not right there, is the heart of the city, certainly within a five, 10 minute walk at max. So that's really, really nice that you're always in the heart of a given destination. I like that a lot. So now why us? Now, I won't go through and read you know, every single bullet point here because I don't, I don't want to do that. In, in the interest of time. Um, but you can see these are our brand truths, our marketing strengths, if you will, where we hang our hat in terms of what we bring to the table. Um, two that I'll mention that have come into play most recently during the pandemic, and that is the middle one here, the highest level of hygiene and cleanliness. Frankly, that's something we've always done, but now we talk about it, right? It's just something part and parcel of who we are as a company, but now we talk about it because people have an interest, obviously. The other thing, because we're family owned, people wanna know about the financial stability of the company because again, we're family owned. We're not publicly traded, not selling more stock to, to get more funds, that kind of thing. Uh, we are incredibly financially stable. And I mentioned earlier, I don't know if I used the word prudent, I might've used the word prudent when it comes to our owners, um, but they have been prudent in the sense that they pay as we, we pay as we go. 
Every ship we build, we pay for in cash up front. And we have three new ships coming next year. They're all paid for already. So the owners, again, are very prudent in that way. So it gives us financial stability, which in this particular era in which we're in, an unprecedented era for the travel industry, to be debt-free is a good, good thing, right? So indeed, the rivers do continue to flow right now. They are flowing in Europe. Uh, and we just completed a successful European uh, sailings, right? And you might say, how did that happen? Well, we got chartered. Uh, Alma Christina, one of our ships, was chartered by a German tour operator back starting in early July and just finished up about a few days ago. So the last four months, early July to uh, early November, we've been actually cruising on the Rhine with primarily German speaking guests, the Germans and Austrians, Swiss, some Dutch as well and Belgians. And the cool thing is twofold. One, um, we're fortunate, uh, grateful that we had no COVID cases, none, zero. So that points to, I think, hopefully the level of or in that hygiene and cleanliness and the protocols and everything that we're doing. Uh, but number two is the invaluable experience of being on the Rhine River for the last four months as the only North American cruise brand operating in Europe. Where there were 58 ships operating in Europe, some still are. Um, ours, again, charter came to an end. Um, one ship from North America, as far as a company goes, and that's us. So it's nice to have learned everything we've learned uh, and how much of this will carry over into next year, we'll just have to see, but it's nice that we have this experience under our belt. Now, if you want to take a look at some of the things that we're doing on board, you wanna see it cashed out a little more, just go to amawaterways.com forward slash travel dash updates. Again, amawaterways.com forward slash travel dash updates. And this will, again, go into more detail as to everything that we're doing on board uh, our ships, the Ama Christina, and then what we'll carry over going forward. Also, this Travel Waiver Plus, Travel insurance is key. Obviously, this is just icing on the cake or a cherry on top in that it gives you further peace of mind that uh, allowing you to cancel for whatever reason uh, right up to 24 hours prior to the start of your trip. And then whatever penalties you might have been under for canceling for any reason, you get back in a future cruise credit good for two years. So this is something to be aware of. Uh, we are selling a fair amount of it because uh, it does give you that additional peace of mind and the advisor's at uh, Dimensions in Travel can tell you more about it. I just wanted you to be aware. We do have fantastic cruise managers. They are the circus masters on board. They do just a tremendous job. The service levels are based on a high staff to guest ratio. Also the people that we hire, the fact that they have sort of bought into this whole notion that we're one big happy family and they're local as well. So they can talk to you about the areas in which you're cruising. Our ships are quite innovative in many, many ways. This is probably the most innovative ship, the Ama Magna, that Time Magazine named one of the world's greatest places last year. We're very proud of that. We'll talk more about that ship here coming up. It's a double wide. You heard me right, a double wide. <laughs> also, river cruising allows you to double your leisure time, as it says here, because you're not packing and unpacking. The ship becomes your essentially boutique kind of floating hotel, right? And, and, and it's not the destination unto itself. A lot of the larger ocean going ships, they say, come try this ship. The ship becomes the destination. And oh, by the way, you're gonna see this, that, and the other. We're the exact opposite. We say, we're gonna immerse you in a beautiful local European culture. Oh, and by the way, you're going to double your leisure time and be on a very beautiful boutique in nature sort of hotel on the water. These are our most popular accommodations because if you've been on an ocean cruise, there is a likelihood that you've enjoyed a balcony. And my previous company that I worked for, they were kind of the innovators in putting balconies on standard accommodations. So our owners, uh, Rudy and Christine and all, when we build these ships, we build a lot of them that have this as the predominant accommodation, which is what's called a twin balcony because you have here a traditional balcony with a couple of chairs and a table. And you have a French balcony here as well, right? So a twin balcony accommodation. And I will say candidly, these have been the most popular, certainly this past uh, four months with the German speaking audience in light of the fact that this concept of more fresh air is, <laughs> is a good thing these days. So, and that's always a good thing. And so these sell the fastest uh, indeed, no question about that. This is a picture of uh, the Ama Magna, uh, a category SA or SB. Uh, on that double wide ship, 355 square feet with a full balcony. That's a standard accommodation. And that's usually the size of the suites on some of our smaller ships. So this is standard fare on Ama Magna. 
you are going to, uh, particularly if you know, uh, and our palates here in Northern California, we're also spoiled, right, with the wonderful food. You will love the dining on board Ama Waterways. It's simply superb, as evidenced by the fact that we have this rating from Shane de Retasseur. It's an invite-only organization, a culinary organization that started back in 1248, was reinstituted in 1950 by some very famous French chefs, including three-star Michelin chef Paul Bocuse. Bottom line is the food on board is simply, simply superb. Fresh and locally sourced. It's just absolutely amazing. You'll love the food. We also have a Chef's Table, which is an alternative dining opportunity. Uh, just 24 guests. Ama Magna is a little bit larger. And this is uh, the tasting menu uh, at the Chef's Table paired with local wines, which is quite nice as well. And of course, uh, the way the alcohol works, it's mimosas in the morning, fine European wines and beers at lunch and dinner. And then we do a cocktail hour every night for an hour. So that's what we do in terms of the beverages. Um, we also uh, have exercise classes because we have full-time fitness instructors on board uh, who are there just for your fitness. They're not multi-purpose job-wise. They're only there as fitness or wellness hosts. And so people love, in this case, being up on sun deck, doing a little bit of yoga uh, or cardio or strength training, even dance classes. So that's nice. The entertainment locally is very colloquial and quaint entertainment because you know, you can't have big production shows. That's one of the differences between a big ocean going ship and a river ship. Obviously with the size of the river ship, the entertainment's much more, as you can see on a kind of local level, but still very well received. We have dancing every night. There's an onboard musician as well. Uh, so this is well received. I will say when the ship is in port later in night, half of our guests get off the ship at night and go enjoy the local hangouts in port, right? And we encourage people to do that, um, right? They uh, enjoy doing that. And there's still entertainment happening on board, but a lot of people do enjoy getting off the ship. As I mentioned earlier, the shore excursions are small group, that's key. And so you can go out with 15, 20 people. Uh, so you're not going out with the entire ship's complement. You're just going out with a smaller group because we break them up into pace levels. These are active adventures. So we do have bikes on our ships that people enjoy taking out either individually on their own, which you can do, or you can be a part of a bike tour as well. We also do special interest tours, this being truffle hunting in France with a, a canine versus a bovine. Uh, so unique and interesting special interest tours. And then we also do exclusive experiences as well, where you, in this case, you go to Lonnet Castle in Lonstein, Germany for a special wine and beer tasting with private access just for our Ama Waterways guests. So those are fun to do as well. So let's talk a little bit about, as we go back here, the Rhine, the Mine, and the Moselle. Again, these are the rivers that people gravitate to, particularly the Rhine, for first time river cruising. And for obvious reasons, because there's just absolutely stupendous and wonderful experiences on the Rhine and these other rivers as well. Uh, there is the map, the Rhine, typically you start in Amsterdam and finish here in Basel, or Basel back up to Amsterdam. That's a typical Rhine cruise. But there's opportunities here to go on the mine as well as the Moselle here, which is a river you don't hear much about, but is actually quite stupendous in its own right. So these are typical uh, first time river cruises. And by the way, every time we start or end a cruise, we always have pre and or post cruise options as well, which is kind of nice. So you can come in early and or stay uh, later on. And I do have a video I'm going to show you. So bear with me as I do that. Hold on. And let's take a look at journey along the Rhine and the Moselle. Let's go. Imagine yourself turning the pages of your very own fairy tale as you glide past the fabled landscapes along Europe's Rhine and Moselle rivers. With Ama waterways, hike storied hills to romantic castles and charming villages. Taste the sweet nectar from Germany's Rheingau wine region. Pedal through the historic vineyards of the Moselle River Valley. Toast with Kolsch beer in Cologne. Immerse yourself in the colorful Alsace region of France, visiting beautiful Strasbourg and enchanting Rickvier. Be inspired by stunning castles clinging to the edges of riverbanks as you cruise through the breathtaking Rhine Gorge. And 
and wake up each morning to a new city or castle around the bend. It's all waiting for you on an unforgettable Rhine and Moselle river cruise with Ama Waterways. All right. So let's take a look then at a few of the highlights of the Rhine River, which I've had the good fortune of doing a few times, uh, certainly over my uh, last little while in the river sector. And of course, Amsterdam in the Netherlands are where many of the Rhine River cruises begin or end. And this from the blooming tulips uh, of nearby Kukenhof Gardens to the picturesque UNESCO designated canals of which there's about 160 canals, the Rijksmuseum, the Van Gogh Museum. Amsterdam is a world-class city, not to mention the Heineken Brewery is there too. Uh, so, uh, and again, because we begin or end here, there will be pre and post cruise options for you. The other cool thing is that I didn't mention, the cruise managers who are gonna be with you on the ship are also with you at the hotel. So they become sort of like your own private concierge. That's really what happens, so that's kind of nice. Cologne, Germany, absolutely amazing. And it's a major center of culture, certainly with, there's over 30 museums and hundreds of art galleries, but this is the most scenic landmark, is the Gothic Cathedral, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and absolutely stunning, a must visit in Cologne, Germany. And mentioning beer again, the Kolsch Beer Hall is nearby. And of course, each town in Germany produces their own beer. So in Cologne, it's Kolsch Beer. Uh, so both a mix of visiting the Gothic Cathedral and a visit to the Kolsch Beer Hall uh, are a must. And then everybody knows the Rhine, certainly for the fact that there are tons and tons of castles along the Rhine, uh, lots of them. And so you'll be cruising along. You'll be typically out here on sun deck and there will be narration that you can either listen to through your audio box, your headset, um, or you don't need to have that headset, but it, the descriptions will be uh, taking place for you so you know what you're seeing as you go along through the Rhine Gorge, seeing all these uh, magnificent castles. Heidelberg is one of absolutely my favorite places in Germany. This is the Heidelberg Castle. You'll have a chance to visit. Um, you'll also have a chance to spend town time in the town of Heidelberg, hike across the river. I shouldn't say hike, but take a walk across the bridge and explore different parts of the town. Um, and so Heidelberg is to me, and particularly this is more in the spring or summer, but in the fall, if you can imagine, all of this is fall colors, just absolutely amazing. So there are really, uh, in terms of seasons of cruising, uh, they all have unique aspects, the four seasons, obviously, but certainly Heidelberg in the fall is quite beautiful. Strasbourg is the capital of France's Alsace region. Uh, and so people from this part of France or Germany that sit on the Rhine, they don't say they're French or German, they call themselves Alsatians, right? Because they've been French, they've been German, they've been French, they've been German as the borders have changed over the years. So it's easier just to say, you know what, we're Alsatians and it is a very, very unique place. Uh, and again, it sits right on the border of Germany and it's known for its wine culture, certainly, and the 16th and 17th century half timbered houses which you see here. Um, now, Disney got their innovation, or I should say their inspiration, not innovation, but their inspiration for uh, Beauty and the Beast, the town in Beauty and the Beast from Rijkdir, here in the Alsace region. So this is uh, quite, quite something. It's a rustic town, cobblestone streets, and it's a nestled right between the Vosage Mountains and world famous wineries that are nearby that you have a chance to visit too. I mean, this just, I mean, looks like Disney almost created it, but it's the real thing. You can see why Disney would be so enamored to kind of base the town and beauty and the beast on Rijkwier, France. And then Basel, Switzerland. This is again, where our cruises turn around, either begin or end. So you have time to spend here in Basel. You also have time to do excursions and land stays that incorporate Lucerne, Switzerland, Zurich, Switzerland, and a new program next year that takes in Lake Como. You spend three nights in Lake Como at the Hilton Hotel on beautiful Lake Como. And Basel is also where we have our operations office in Switzerland as well. It sits right at the border between Switzerland and France. As a matter of fact, at the airport in Basel, when you walk out of the airport, if you make a left turn, you're in France. You make a right turn, you're here in Switzerland. For an insider tip, yes. You uh, hopefully have an interest or will have an interest in seeing Anne Frank's house in Amsterdam on our pre-cruise days. 
these are something that you'll want to pre-reserve, no question about that, if you have an interest in seeing Anne Frank's house, so a little tip there. Uh, moving on to the Moselle, or Mosel, as the Germans say, so certainly the Moselle, I like, I, I just like to say Moselle because frankly it sounds a little more romantic to me than Mosel, uh, but this is a river that when I ask cruise managers what's their favorite river in Europe, just from a sort of aesthetic standpoint, from a beauty standpoint, they always say this river, right? So you may not have been on this river, you've always heard of the Rhine or the Danube, but you might want to put this on your radar screen, the Moselle. It's the oldest wine growing region, the steepest wine growing region. You look at some of these terraces over here, those are vineyards. So you talk about hand picking wine, they do it there. Uh, and again, very bucolic, small villages and towns, uh, mines, Germany is one of the larger cities you're gonna visit. And there you're gonna get to go in to see the Marc Chagall uh, stained glass windows at St. Stephen's Church in Mines. Uh, another inside tip is if you go during a certain time of year, springtime in particular, the vineyard peaches are in bloom, and that's quite well received. So another little inside tip. This is Kochem, uh, and I, I'm not giving the German pronunciation its due, uh, but this is really a fairy tale town, as you can see, right? I mean, much with that castle there, and that is the Reichsburg Castle from the 11th century, and it sits right above the Moselle. And it's also home, this particular area, home to a very, very famous mustard mill. There are these vineyards again in, in the Moselle region. And by the way, there's no corkage fee on our ship. So you definitely want to bring wine back on board and share with your friends and family. You can do that again, no corkage fee. We also pour wines of the region, as I mentioned earlier. And the wine from this particular area is Riesling. And let me tell you, it tastes a lot different than the Rieslings here in California. I'm not a big Riesling fan, but I love the Rieslings in this part of the world. They're quite, quite stupendous. Another thing to keep in mind is in Berncastel, we have a unique opportunity uh, during that time frame, the Moselle Wine Festival, latter part of August, early September, Amadante, Amasiena will cruise by during the Moselle Wine Festival in Berncastel, another little insider tip. So let's move on to the mine. I was in Nuremberg uh, last year. I'm a little bit of a World War II history buff. So seeing the places where Lenny Riefenstahl filmed Triumph of the Will, where Hitler held his rallies, going to the Nuremberg courtrooms, uh, really, really interesting from a World War II standpoint, to say the least. Uh, Bamberg as well, quite interesting, lovely little town. And then Bamberg is known for its Rausch beer, smoked beer, uh, that uses Franconian pork, uh, knuckle dishes. Uh, and then, of course, you see the beautiful pretzels there as well. Uh, I love this picture of Würzburg. Uh, with the beautiful fall colors and the castle sitting on the hill there. Uh, and then we have new ships coming that are going to cruise next year on the Rhine Mine and the Moselle, the Ama Siena and the Ama Lucia. They're the twin balcony ships. Again, they're paid for and they're coming next year. So if you'd like to go on a brand new ship on any of these Rhine Mine uh, Moselle cruises, you can choose the Ama Lucia or the Ama Siena. Uh, this is how river cruising began back in 1992. Rudy Schreiner, our current owner, our owner, our only owner, uh, he decided that, you know what, with this Rhine Mine Danube Canal, which is pictured right here, it's 106 miles long. Uh, you gain over 1,300 feet in elevation, lots and lots of locks you go through. But what it op offered is you could get on a ship up in Amsterdam here and not get off that same ship until you reach the Black Sea, 2,200 miles later. So that, when this opened, and it took many centuries for this finally to be built, when it opened, Rudy convinced a company to start promoting river cruising, and that's what got things going. So it was his idea, and he is, as I say, the acknowledged godfather of North American river cruising. So there is the Mine Danube Canal. So you might not realize that, yes, this is quite a stupendous achievement connecting the Rhine with the mine into the Danube, right? So there's a lock that you'll go through. If you've been through the Panama Canal, obviously a very similar experience in terms of going up and down. Um, that's kind of interesting as well. It's in a, obviously a, a, an intimate setting that you go through these locks. All right, now we're gonna move on to the Danube River. And I have another little video that I'll show you now. Hang on, I'll get that going. Bear with me, there we go. Okay, still getting my driver's license. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. Did 
you know that when you sail with us on the Upper Danube, we actually get to celebrate our very own Oktoberfest all year round in the little town of Filsholfen located in Bavaria. Now this little town was actually playing a key role in the creation of the most popular brewing style ever known as the Pilsner. And the father and creator of the Pilsner beer was actually Joseph Grohl, born in this town of Filsholfen. So joining us on one of our river cruises on the Upper Danube, stopping in Filsholfen, celebrating with us the Oktoberfest is definitely a great way to discover the Bavarian traditions, such as the outfits, the beers, but also the music, and also definitely have a lot of fun. Now, until we sail again, I would like to wish you Prost. That is Camille, and Camille is one of my favorite cruise managers. She speaks French and German and other languages, and she happens to live uh, in Passau, where she was talking about. So this is a typical first time Danube River cruise from uh, Vilchhofen, as she said, to Budapest or the reverse. This, again, a typical first time river cruise on the Danube. Now, Rick Steves, Mr. Europe, Rick Steves says that this section in here which is the Bacau Valley, sort of between here, between Durmstein and a town called Melk here, uh, that is, he calls the most quintessential river cruise experience in all of Europe, again, according to Rick Steves. So the Danube is spectacular, uh, absolutely wonderful. This is that Bacau Valley, and this is where you'll in thoroughly enjoy going through this UNESCO World Heritage Area, lovely vineyards that are there, small little towns that we visit as well. Um, if you like to bike, you can do that. I did bike ride here through the Vakau Valley. Um, as I say, there's always guides uh, there with you to sell you everything that you're seeing along the way. The Ama Magna now operates on the Danube. This ship, here's the difference. I said she's a double wide. That's what I mean. That's a traditional river ship. That's one of our competitors. This ship carries about 196. This ship, it's twice the width and only carries 192. So really unique vessel. Again, 72 feet wide. Why is she able to go on the Danube? Because there are a set of locks that are 72 feet wide on the Danube. So the Ama Magna is really a spectacular ship. Multiple restaurants, multiple bars, big accommodations. Uh, so really, really special vessel. So she is on the Danube, and I just wanted you to be aware of that. I showed that picture earlier just to show it again. That's the average accommodation, so quite comfortable indeed. Um, and then, as I said earlier, this is Budapest. Uh, we're beginning and ending many of our cruises start or end here. So again, you get to spend time in the twin towns of Buda and Pest because it separated uh, those two towns by the Danube River. That is the Parliament Building, which talk about Disney-esque. I mean, uh, Walt Disney, uh, I don't think could have come up with such a design. It's so spectacular. And we do evening cruises by this area of the Parliament Building uh, at night, and it is just absolutely glorious. It's a moment where you pinch yourself and think, oh my gosh, this is just, it doesn't get any better than this. Um, Bratislava, we go to as well in Slovakia, and it's known as the Coronation City of Kings, and it boasts, as you can see there, an incredibly gleaming castle, and it was home actually to the Hungarian crown jewels for nearly 200 years. And so Slovakia doesn't get a lot of attention, but this Bratislava is wonderful. Our owner, Rudy, is from Vienna, so we do spend quite a bit of time in Vienna. Of course, it was the capital of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and it's just absolutely awash with Baroque treasures and including the uh, Royal Schoenbrunn Palace that you'll get to visit there. Dernstein, a little bit smaller village along the uh, Danube here, and Dernstein, Richard the Lionhearted actually uh, was imprisoned up in this castle here during the Crusades. And Dernstein is known as the Pearl of the Wachau region. Uh, so wine and castle ruins and this incredibly beautiful blue church, as it's known, are here in Dernstein. Now, if you'd like to go up into the Czech Republic, when the ship is in Linz, Austria, you have the chance to go to Chesky Kromlov, uh, which is a small village. Again, it's about a 30, 40 minute ride from Linz up into the Czech Republic. So certainly without question worth visiting Trusky Krumlov because if you've been here to Salzburg, if you've not been to Salzburg, I recommend going to Salzburg, but if you've been to Salzburg, then you can head north in again to Chesky Krumlov and certainly Salzburg, everyone knows the sound of music, uh, the bucolic setting. And so you get to visit the Austrian Lake District as well. So it's absolutely worth a visit. 
as is the Melk Abbey, still a, a full-time abbey uh, along the Danube in the town of Melk. There's a school in service as well. This is the beautiful library. This is a must-see visit, uh, is the Abbey in Melk. And then as you heard uh, Camille say, in Vilshofen, she says it better than I do, we always have an Oktoberfest. No matter what time of year, there's always going to be a party for our guests with the Oktoberfest, which is kind of fun. Now, an itinerary as we wrap up here, Gems of Southeast Europe. This is Lower Danube or further Eastern Europe where you can take in Austria, Croatia, Hungary, Serbia, Romania, Bulgaria, and Turkey if you want to do an Istanbul program. So this, again, is the Lower Danube cruising from Budapest to Georgiou, which is for Bucharest. So we're seeing more and more interest in this itinerary. You do go through the Iron Gates where you see the carved statue of De Sabalis, uh, one of the kings that united uh, that part of the world, also into Serbia and Novi Sad. Uh, the Belgrade as well, uh, and then the hike, if you'd like to do that, up to the Belogradchik Fortress in Bulgaria. That's one of our active excursions, as you might imagine. If you're a, a Vlad the Impaler, uh, Brasov uh, area, that's Dracula country in Transylvania. We have an opportunity to go there, and of course, we do pre and post in Bucharest. All right, so that's a little bit about the Rhine and the Danube. Um, what I'm going to do now is talk to you about some specials, and then we'll come back for Q&A. So uh, Dimensions and Travel are part of Ensemble Travel Group. The bottom line is it's a collection of very wonderful uh, consortium of agencies. And as members of Ensemble, the good news is you have many, many departures next year that offer further inducements, further amenities. So that's key there. We do have a free air program in place through the end of December, free air, whether it's for two people, for one person, or it's business class air, you again, just get with the travel advisors at Dimensions, they'll tell you more about it. These are always popular, without question, are the free air programs. Uh, since we just had Veterans Day uh, on uh, yesterday, or Tuesday, what day was it? I think it was uh, uh, Tuesday. This is something we always offer, the military savings of $100 per person for current military or if you're past military. So I wanted to make mention of that. And this is, by the way, the beaches of Normandy that we offer on our cruises on the Seine. Now, for those of you that have attended today, here is the virtual two for one offer. I know this is a little bit of a busy slide with Captain Joffrey here, but for webinar attendees only, here are one, two, three, four, five departures starting next summer, July and into August that are what? two, four, one. Yep. One person goes free. The other person pays. This is for booking by the end of November this month. It's the promo code is two for one dash VCN virtual cruise night. There are some exceptions, so it's not available on the two lowest categories or on the suites, but that leaves a lot of other categories that are available at a two for one deal, right? But it's only through dimensions and travel only through November 30th. Now, if you cannot go for whatever reason on one of these two for one departures, then anything else you book by the end of November, we can offer you an additional 100 per person discount for coming to the webinar today. That's our thank you to you for attending. Uh, these two for ones you do not see hardly ever. So we're doing them only as it relates to these virtual events, right? And then just a reminder again about the webinar on December 2nd with Christine Karst, our co-founder about Christmas markets. You don't wanna miss that. And then we want to say again, thank you so much for coming out today. We appreciate greatly your uh, support and your interest. And this is a, a picture from the Ama Christina with the crew practicing their their COVID uh, uh, protocols with the masks and whatnot. And uh, again, who, who knows how much that's going to carry over next year? We'll see. Uh, and so now let's do this. I'm going to come back up on uh, camera. All right, and. There I am. Let us see what Brian, kinds of- Brian, we're not seeing you yet. Oh, there you are. Hi there. Hey, Jill. Hello. hello, hello. All right. So did I did I totally mesmerize you such that, that you have no questions? You... <laughs> Thank you, Brian. You took us to the Czech Republic, Hungary, Slovakia, Switzerland, Austria, Germany, Netherlands, and France in 45 minutes. So mm. awesome. I loved getting away out of my bedroom here so thank you <laughs> you're welcome you're welcome so we'll, we'll wait another minute or two to see if we have questions but 
Um, you know, more to because typically people, you know, I have a question, what, you know, wh when are you going to start up again, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, we were cruising, as I said earlier, this uh, these last four months. So that's the that's the sixty four thousand dollar question, I guess, is the way it goes, is the way the saying is. But you know, we have to see, uh, right? The goal is to start up next spring, right? Um, and we're ready, willing, and able to do that when we're allowed to do that. I will tell you, the books are open also for 2022. We opened them five months early, back in May, right? And uh, so we are seeing a lot of interest and activity for 2022 as well. So just to kind of keep you apprised of, of that. Hey, Brian, just a, a mention that in 2022 is a 10-year festival that they hold in the Netherlands every year called Floriad. And yep. Dimensions and Travel does have some group space on a Floriad sailing uh, during tulip time that we'll be getting more information out to people about. So hold that thought if you love gardening for 2022. Good point. But, Good point. but we'd love to focus on 2021 if we can for now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and actually that Christmas markets webinar that Christine's going to host in early December, um, we're going to talk, uh, those have a lot of Christmas markets for 21, which we'll be talking about Christmas time this year for the following year, uh, including yeah. including a, a departure that uh, Dimensions has space on, on the Ama Magna, on that double wide. Leadership. That's right. Queen of the fleet. We do have a question here. What are your single supplement charges? That's from Susan Buffum. Well, Susan, glad you asked that. Um, I wish I could have put an extra slide up there, which I didn't do. But right now, we do have uh, solo traveler specials. Uh, first of all, in France, the French ships, the smaller French vessels, they have cabins that are solo occupancy cabins. This, again, the smaller French vessels, right? So that's number one. Uh, and there are not very many. I think there's only one or two. So they go quickly because the particularly solo travelers that like to come with us know about those certainly so that's number one number two we just came out with a new program where the surcharge is only 25 percent not 50 not 75 not 200 a 25 percent surcharge to occupy a double occupancy cabin and that's on a whole slew of departures next year and that's in effect right now so i didn't put an image up about that because of your question and we can now talk about that we are very much solo traveler friendly we look after you you're not abandoned, the crew looks after you, there's special things we do for our solo travelers, so uh, you're very much welcome to uh, inquire with the advisors at uh, Dimensions about the solo traveler special. Now, Greg just asked, is there, or if we like a smaller group, are there ships with only 50 to, 50 to 75 passengers? Well, um, I will say this, in Egypt, we have a new ship coming called the Amadalia that's coming next September. Uh, and that ship only carries 68 guests. The ship on the Zambezi, uh, or actually in the Chobe River, called the Zambezi Queen, uh, that only has 28 guests. So those are our two uh, smallest ships. As far as river ships, our ships average about 150 guests. So that's a little bit larger. Now, having said that, this past summer, the Ama Christina was only allowed to operate with a maximum of 100 guests. And that was per European uh, restrictions. We could not operate at full capacity based on the edicts that were in place this past four months in Europe. So there is some talk, whether it comes to fruition, we don't know, but it is being talked about that next spring, uh, when we knock wood, hopefully start up again, we may not operate at full capacity. We may again operate at a more limited capacity of like maximum of 100 per ship. That is definitely being talked about. So that's just whether that again comes to pass, we don't know, but it is in the conversation. So uh, those are our two smaller ships, Greg, and then we'll see about next spring whether we're limited to just a max of 100 guests. The German charters averaged, quite frankly, around 80 to 90. So we didn't even hit 100. We hit 100 closer to the end of the charters, but that was the average of 80 to 90 guests. So hopefully that uh, answers uh, your question. Okay. Right. Let me see, I'll pull another, if there's any more. Okay, all right. Um, last chance for questions. And then if not, we'll we'll wrap up. And as I said, I'll send the video link to Jill and Diana uh, tomorrow. And uh, feel free to, again, share that with friends and family. That would be great. Um, that I will tell you that those two for one specials, 
five months ago when we started doing these webinars, it was just show us some nice pictures. You know, now it's it, it's evolved to where people they, they want to get something on the calendar. That's what we've seen happen. And supposedly the psychological experts out there say that when you actually make a deposit and a deposit, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, to book something, it's four hundred dollars per person. That's the deposit. Final payment 90 days prior. That's how it works. OK, <laughs> but when you actually make that commitment and that deposit and you book one of those two for ones for next summer, the level of how shall we say good feeling that that brings <laughs> to have that on your calendar um in some ways they're saying it's just as good as going on the trip is the anticipation that you have something truly to look forward to so we are seeing that quite a bit now with these special webinar attendee offers at two for one people are like whoa yeah that sounds pretty good and then they book it it's on the calendar and then your your mood lifts right so anyway i wanted to mention that as well playing amateur shrink there uh okay so that's it on the questions uh jill okay. and diana would you like to say a few last words yeah brian i just want to thank you so much we love your enthusiasm as always and um uh thank you for taking us on a, <laughs> a journey down the rhine the danube the mine and the mosul and we appreciate your supportive dimensions in travel and all you do behind the scenes for all of our AMA clients. You've been there for many, many clients when we've needed to have some little tweaks done. So we're so grateful to have you in our, our corner and there for everybody who's listening. Jill, you want to? Thank you. No, that, that was great. Okay. You've said it all. Great. And again, thanks to Brian. Really appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to uh, talking with all of our customers soon. Okay. Absolutely. And our yeah. contact information is there, our 800 number, or just reach out to your favorite Dimensions and Travel Advisor via email. If you come up with questions or you've got some ideas, you just want to run by somebody, we'd love to talk Absolutely. with you. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Stay well. We'll see you out there. Bye.